Welcome to YouTube Tuesday. I try to get one out every week for you all. So, um, I felt like doing a negative painting. And I don't mean negative as in sad or bad thoughts. I mean, we're going to be painting a negative space to bring things into the forefront like I did here. So, I'm going to probably have to heavily edit this video because this one will take a little longer. But here's what I want you to do. Um, you can pause the video while you do this, but I want you to sketch out some basic shapes. It doesn't have to be leaves. Um, I did flowers here, I think you can see that. And you don't have to go this detailed either. You can do four big leaves, um, you know, six medium, anything you wanna do. It's more time consuming to do a lot of little ones but whatever you end up doing, sketch the stem and the leaves. They don't have to look realistic. That is not the point of this project. So assuming that you've sketched everything already, let's start off with a wash of water. I have a kind of a bigger brush here. This is just a little five by seven. Just go right over your pencil lines. Everything is going to be covered up when we're done. You don't, you don't have to get it too wet. All right, and now randomly pick a few colors that you would like for the overall tone of your painting. So in this one, I did pinks, purples, and teal. I don't know what I'm feeling for this one, but I think I want it to be a little different. So how about drop a little bit of oranges all over. This is the background layer, so it does not matter. I think I'll do some hot pinks. And you wanna lay down a lot of color because remember that this is going to dry lighter than what you're first thinking. Okay, I think I'll do a little more orange. Just random. I'm not actually coloring the flowers. It's tempting. It is very tempting. And I guess I'll do some purple. Oh, that's not coming through, is it? Well, maybe I'll do some blue. So together, the pinks and the blue. There we go, that worked. See, notice how I'm not being careful at all. <laughs> Just grabbing some random colors. And I think I might want some more orangey yellow. There you go. Just some highlights of it. Fill in all the spaces. For this one, I really don't want um, any white showing. Okay. This needs to dry, and then I'll come back. Once your project is dry, we're going to choose which flowers are going to be the, or the leaves, whichever you did, which ones are gonna be in the front? <clears throat> when I say in the front, I mean the ones where there's they're on top of all the other ones. So this one is on top of that. So this is in the forefront. This one is in the front. Most of these are, those are. So just scout out on your sketch which ones are in front. And for me, I'm gonna put a little dot in the center so I remember. So this one, this, 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 um, that one, and this, and this. All right. And then most of my stems are also in front. So what we're gonna do now is switch to a more detailed brush if you have one handy. For my detail, I'm using a size six, but whatever you're comfortable with. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do here 
is pick our secondary color. So these light ones that we put a dot on, these will always stay the color that they are, okay? So now we're gonna go in and paint one solid second color on everything except for the ones that have our little dot on them. So for me, I want to pick, I think I wanna pick red. Let me see if this is gonna be dark enough. So what I'm gonna do is just cut in around the flowers or the leaves or whatever you drew that are in front. But I'm gonna cover up everything else. So don't lay down too heavy of a paint because you you don't wanna miss your, your lines. You don't want them to go away. And watch for a bit and get a more of an idea of what I'm doing here. So I'm leaving the things that are in front, covering up everything else. So basically what you're doing is painting the negative space. The negative space meaning not the actual objects but the space around them because the objects are the positive space. Kind of a happy little Mother's Day project, which isn't for another two months, but still. This is really fun for people like me who like details. It's pretty time consuming though. Feel free to pause this video and come back once you have got all of your negative space painted. Just remember you're only leaving blank the things that you have put a little mark in. It does get pretty detailed and pretty difficult after a while. I'm not being too cautious about um, the different shades like I have a darker red here lighter there that is good it makes it beautiful so after your first initial coat is down you should have just a few that are light it looks like I did indeed leave all the ones that I had a little dot on so this needs to dry and after it's dry we'll come back and go on to the next step all right our second coat is dry at this point, we're gonna pick a, another color that is going to be darker. So I'm gonna try to go for a deeper purple. We'll see if this works. I'm using different paints. I try to use this little one for my YouTube videos. What we're gonna do now, remember we're not touching these initial flowers. So now we're gonna look for the second layer. And we're gonna put a little X in the ones that we don't wanna touch. So pick maybe, oh, I don't know. Maybe pick a couple that we're gonna leave. So I think I'll leave this one. And I'm gonna leave this one. And I'm gonna leave this one. So now we're going to paint around everything again, but we're not gonna touch the ones with the dot and we're not gonna touch the ones with the X, but we're gonna paint everything else. And of course you wanna leave your stems the way they are. So let's get started with a darker color. Here we go again. Yes, it kind of feels like we're painting the same thing many times because we are, but that original color is going to shine through and make a really cool textured look. Okay, so I'm not leaving this one, which means I can paint over it. 
not too thick, remember, you still want to see that basic outline. It is an option if you don't want to sketch this in pencil, you could sketch it um, with a, a waterproof pen or a marker, something that won't bleed. But the whole point is that when we're done, we're going to get some really cool color variation. Looks like I covered up my stem there by accident. I don't know at what point I did that, but we can always bring that back in and I'll show you how to do that at the end. There are no mistakes, just opportunities for creativity. that's our third coat after that's dry if you need to go in and resketch some things that got a little lost now is a great time to do it I know mine are kind of difficult to see in a few areas so I'm just gonna remind myself of where they were there I don't think there were any more so now the last few that you have, you're also going to avoid those. So now we're painting the negative space around absolutely everything that we drew. This is when you want to use a darker color. So I'm going to try to go in with, I want to do Payne's gray, but I will. I will try not to. <laughs> Let me see if this is going to be dark enough. Okay, here's a blue. Let's do that. So now I'm going to use this blue and I'm going to go around everything. So this is going to take some time again. And this is the layer where it really counts to be extra detailed. If you want to smooth out any edges, this is the time to do it. If you want to add salt to a few places, when the paint is still wet, that is the time to do it. So exercise some of your creativity on this last step. This is where it all comes together and makes something beautiful. If you can't remember what salt does to a painting, when you when this the paint is not dry but not super wet if you put salt on it it will make these cool little bursts of texture so feel free to do that just enjoy yourself as we cut in around all of this it's so relaxing it's almost like a meditation i seem to add more paint as i'm cutting in close to something and then more water to bring it down because I want some of those original, original purples and blues and reds to come through. And now you can, you can make certain parts of your stems wider if you need to by just not cutting in so close. I just did that with this one. This is where you really define shapes. Let's see, where do I want salt? How about that new spot that I just painted? And that's it. Don't want to go too crazy with it. We're going to let this dry and then we're going to tighten up some details. If you are happy with the way yours looks right now, by all means, you leave it. I am going to 
erase my little pencil marks in the center of these flowers. I don't want to rub it too hard or it's going to leave a, a mark. So I'm going to get rid of some of them. Just the ones that are a little too noticeable. And I want to get a really pale yellow here. More water than paint. I don't want too much paint. And I just want to make these yellow ones look a little more, a little brighter. So I'm going to add some color. Maybe a couple more. It's not necessary. I don't think I did that on my finished leaf one that I showed you earlier. I just felt like, like this should have a couple. Just a little brighter. Not much. There. I think that adds some interest. And I think I would like to add a center to some of these flowers. Now I'm not actually making a perfect little circle. I'm um, just giving the illusion that there's a center. And sometimes that means putting a squiggly line somewhere in the middle, wetting your brush, touching one side of it and kind of letting the water pull that paint however it wants to go. There. Right. And that's it. Let's take off the tape and see what this looks like. It has kind of a cherry blossom oriental look, doesn't it? You put a little mat on that and we have art. I hope you enjoyed this one. It's one of my favorites, which is why I did this exercise again. It takes a lot of brain power and thinking and planning, but I think the end result is simply stunning. Thanks for watching.